Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm Carl, a member of the CK12 team, and we're coming to you live from the world headquarters of the CK12 Foundation here in beautiful Palo Alto, California. My colleague Lindsay and I will be running today's webinar, Getting Started with Flexbooks and the 2.0 Platform. We're so glad that you've joined us and are participating in our CK12 Certified Educator Program. Yes, thank you to everyone who has joined us today and welcome to day one of the live sessions for the CK12 Certified Educator Program. We have built this program for educators who want to go deeper with CK12 and really become experts at using our platform to help make teaching easier and to truly personalize the learning experience for students. In order to become CK12 certified, here's a quick reminder of what you need to do. You need to watch two mandatory on-demand sessions. We launched the first on-demand session called Certified Educator Program and CK12 Overview on Monday, July 1st. If you have not watched those on-demand videos yet, please make it a priority since it sets you up for success and should help answer any questions you have about the Certified Educator Program and navigating CK12. The second on-demand session called Beyond the CK12 Certified Educator Program will be available by the conclusion of the live sessions on July 19th, and you will have until July 31st to watch it. Next, you need to join us for five or more live sessions where you can choose between times offered and content covered. If you need to register for more sessions, you can do so at any time. You will need to complete the accompanying assignments to go with all sessions. Lastly, you'll complete a final form to request your certification, and then you'll be CK12 certified. We've sent you a few emails about joining the program class on CK12. If you still haven't done so, you can log into CK12 and click on classes. There you will see a plus sign if you're signed in as a teacher or a join a class button if you happen to be registered as a student. When you click on that, you can use the code printed here on the screen. It is case sensitive, so eight lowercase tzwp. After you join the CEP class, you can click on shared resources to find the program's Flexbook 2.0 with all content and assignments. Once you've accessed the program Flexbook under the shared resources, you can find the first on-demand session and any other sections by expanding the table of contents and selecting the matching title. After viewing the five separate videos for this session and reviewing the questions that you need to answer, click the start button in the bottom corner of the screen and access the assignment, which is labeled quiz on our system. When you've completed the assignment, exit out of the report and click turn in on the main lesson page. This will change the bar from a teal bar with a turn in button to a light green one that notes that you turned it in and allows you to turn in any updated work. You can always see your progress on these assignments under reports. There you will see both your percentage completion and the date you turned in each assignment. Um, I just wanted to say we are not looking for perfection with your assignment scores. We are trying out a new open response question type during this program, and we recognize that our system may occasionally count an answer as incorrect that may actually be acceptable. So in the event that you scored like dramatically low on a quiz because you need to rewatch a session, you're able to retake and turn in the quiz again up until the program due date of July 31st. But in general, know that we're monitoring the class reports and we can view all of your answers at any time if we have any concerns about your score. Okay, um, just a quick note about Zoom. We use Zoom as our webinar platform this summer. Throughout this session and all of our sessions, we'd love for you to get involved in the conversation. You're gonna see two windows in Zoom, one for Q&A and one for chat. We would like for you to type any questions you want answered by the CK12 team in the Q&A window so we, don't make, so we make sure that we don't miss any. The chat window is a place for community conversation. Um, you guys are already doing a great job in that chat window. We love it when you introduce yourself, tell us where you're located, and even the grade or subject that you teach. 
Um, the key thing to remember in the chat window is that you need to send your messages to all panelists and attendees if you want everybody to see what you can type. Some people introduce themselves to all panelists, but please make sure you're doing it to all panelists and attendees. Okay, um, last thing that I really wanna mention here is that we have created a resource page for this webinar and for all of our program sessions. You can find today's resource page in the program's Flexbook, or it can be accessed at the tiny URL printed on the screen, tinyurl.com, CK12 Flexbooks 2019. We'll put the link for today's resource in the chat window right now as well. Okay, take it away, Carl. In this webinar, we'll be covering the following topics. Maximizing learning with the new Flexbook 2.0 platform, offering interactive, integrated, and insightful functionality, enabling a student's personalized journey. Next, we'll talk about choosing a Flexbook 2.0 and where you, you see how to start with a Flexbook 2.0 created by CK12 or even another user. You'll also see how to start with a blank Flexbook 2.0. After that, we'll cover using and customizing a Flexbook 2.0. You'll learn how to make the best Flexbook 2.0 for your students in the correct order and with the richest content. Finally, we'll show you how to publish and share a Flexbook to help out other educators and students. Our main goal is that by the end of this session, you'll come away with a better understanding of CK12's flagship product and the Flexbook 2.0 platform. I'm so I'm happy that so many of you have joined us from around the world today. We see that, um, Lindsay, I can see people here from India and from the UAE, Belarus. So welcome to everybody. Um, whatever time zone you're in, I can see it's late for some people, but we really appreciate you joining us to find out about this exciting new resource from CK12. Over 12 years ago, CK12 changed the world with the introduction of the digital textbook called a Flexbook. Remember that back then, most classrooms didn't have access to computers for each student. Maybe a school had a computer lab, but that wasn't available every day. So back then, teachers came to CK12 and chose a Flexbook. Sometimes they customized it, and then they printed it. The original Flexbooks were lessons that maybe had some videos. Of course, when it got pr printed, the videos didn't play. As more classrooms had access to computers, more people started using the digital versions of our Flexbooks and some of the other digital modalities that we created to help their students learn. In September of 2018, we reimagined our resources and unified them into the Flexbook 2.0 platform. We use the word platform now because what we offer is so much more than a textbook. It's a personalized learning system that adapts to the needs and skills of each student. We did this by bringing the best of CK12 into each lesson. No longer do students and teachers have to search all over the website for the best content. The Flexbook 2.0 platform is your one-stop shopping for best content and learning experience for your students. This means that lessons in the Flexbook 2.0 platform have videos, interactives, easy access to created modalities and resources, and our groundbreaking adaptive practice. Lessons can also offer inline questions to check for understanding during the lesson and give the students feedback on the answers as they're learning. Now we even offer insights to help improve learning for each student. Rather than just hearing from me about the platform, one of our teachers, Will Sappenfield, is going to share his experience to give you first-hand testimonial about the Flexbook 2.0 platform. Take it away, Will. Hello, my name is Will Sappenfield. I'm a CK12 certified educator here in the great state of Oregon. We've got plenty of liquid sunshine for you. I switched to CK12's Flexbook 2.0 because everything was organized for me and the lesson just flowed. Previously, I was Going from one item like manipulatives and practice in different spots and trying to link it all together. But in the 2.0, we were able to work through examples, do some activity-based learning. Then there would be a manipulative like the Plex right within the lesson. A little video there for some extra understanding. I love that because students that are absent have that 
direct instruction right within the video. So 2.0, pulling it all together, has been a great way to make my life easier and the students learning more streamlined. Thanks, Will. So you'll see that the Flexbook 2.0 platform improves our original Flexbook using the power of artificial intelligence and machine learning to enable a student's personalized journey. Each lesson can be a powerful mix of content, including interactives, adaptive practice, videos, and so much more. Additionally, your student's performance is summarized and offered as teacher insights. Imagine harnessing the power of digital to improve your student's learning. That's what the Flexbook 2.0 platform does. Finally, in August, we will begin to offer a PDF option for Flexbook 2.0 lessons for those that need it. Of course, all our platform's digital intelligence can't be captured into a PDF. That's why having your, ac having your students access digitally is always the best option. So now it's time to see the Flexbook 2.0 platform live in action. I'll show you how to access the new Flexbook and experience the improved interface, including teacher insights. We'll also see how each lesson's adaptive practice can be a great solution for personalized learning for your students. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take over the screen from you, Lindsay, and then we will go and get this moving. Great, and everybody keep asking your questions in the Q&A window. Uh, we've got Star and Katie here answering, typing answers to questions, and then Carl will stop at the end of his demo and tackle some live questions as well. Great. All right, so here's my screen. Um, and we're gonna start out here, and we're gonna do a, um, a navigation to the new Flexbook 2.0 platform. So let's go here under Explore. And you'll see the very first thing listed from that Explore menu item is Flexbook 2.0. Let's go there. All right, so here you'll see a little information about the 2.0 platform. But more importantly here, you're going to see um, our Flexbook 2.0s that are available right now. And you can see we've got them for math and for science, both middle school and high school. We've got of the math six and seven for middle school coming out in just the end of this month. So they should be there um, so that you can use them for this next year. But let's go ahead and take a look at our newest book, which is the middle school math eight book. And it has been written specifically for Common Core. And even though there might be some states still that are not doing Common Core, most of that content and curriculum is very similar to what Common Core is. So you're gonna see here, this is our table of contents. We've got some details about the books and you can find other flex books that are similar to this one for this grade. So let's go into linear equations. And you can see here, we've got a variety of, of content here for our um, linear equations. These are each the lessons and let's go inside a lesson. Once we're inside a lesson, you can see we call this the start page. And on the start page here, we can access the lesson or we have a variety of other related modalities that we've specifically curated for this course and this lesson. And this is a new way of doing it here compared to the way we used to do it in our Flexbook, uh, original Flexbooks. So we're gonna go into the lesson now. And you're gonna be able to see here that it looks a lot different than lessons um, on our original Flexbooks. We've simplified things and we think we've helped it focus so the student can really understand what's going on here. So this is the lesson and you can see it's a mix of videos, interactives, and even inline questions. So we can choose some answers here and the students get immediate feedback on those responses so that they can learn in that moment. And this is really useful when I have 35 or 40 students in my class during a lesson, I don't have time to get around to each student multiple times during the, the lesson. So these inline questions are a way to help me get feedback to that student and also to kind of get a better understanding of how the students are doing. You can see you can have multiple questions there and it makes a lesson really interactive. 
and we'll be adding these inline questions to all of our books over the next few months, but you're welcome to add inline questions yourself and make them as appropriate to your class as possible. So you can see here we've got more interactives and one of the most exciting things about the 2.0 platform is the amount of interactivity that are available to your students. So we are kind of excited that this is a really a groundbreaking way of using content in your classroom. So this is all one lesson. And then for students down here, it would say, you know, start practice. And then of course, since I'm a teacher, it gives me the option to assign it. Currently, we offer that you can assign these 2.0 lessons to CK12 classes and Google classes. And you'll hear more throughout the CEP program that we're also gonna be offering it with Canvas and Schoology, and it will be launching this summer. So I'm gonna go back here. And if we come in over here, you're gonna see a little toolbar that offers a lot of great content. So one of the things that you can see is the related content. So things that we've specifically curated for this course and this lesson. We have the new teacher insights here, which tell, shows you here how students are doing based on their practice results. This will help you, and let's go into Tuscany here, and this will help you understand, for example, Tuscany only spent 17 seconds on this lesson and obviously is still developing her skills. But that's useful because if, if she only spent 17 seconds on it, she probably didn't do much on it. And so we can go up to uh, Ryan here and, or let's see here, BT. And you can see they've all achieved the mastery level. So we're proud of their work there. Um, so let's go here, back here. And on the toolbar, we have additional resources. And of course, when you make or the students make any notes or highlights, they'll show up in this section right here, all in one place. Um, so that's kind of an overview of what there is here. I do want to go back and show you that we've got a beautiful teacher's guide available right here. So you're going to see support materials like teacher's editions available on the front page of the table of contents here. Okay, I think that's a good time to um, stop for a second and let's look at some of the questions that are happening in Q&A. Um, there's a lot of questions about the program and joining the class and submitting quizzes and we're going to hold off on those for now. I know Star and Katie are typing answers to you, but um, at the end of this webinar, we'll, we'll go through a lot of that information again for those of you still working on program information. But right now I want to kind of stay on topic with what Carl has been discussing with you. Um, Carl, maybe this is going to come up later, but something that's, that's in our Q&A queue right now are people asking about translation, about other languages. So what can you tell them about um, Flexbooks and the ability there? One of the best things that you have access to in our 2.0 platform is translation is available. So let's go back into that same lesson. And with any page on CK12, you can go to the bottom and you're going to see a selection of all the Google languages. And I will tell you that, um, for example, in the last three years, the Spanish has gotten so much better. And you know, not only do I think it's better, but I've seen students and teachers and parents talk about how this is really useful. So you can see now this is translated into Spanish here. And it does it on the fly, of course. It's not, um, it's not being done by humans, it's being done using Google intelligence, but it proves to be really a great translation. I've heard that the Mandarin um, Chinese is really good. The one that I've heard is not great is Arabic, that Google has trouble translating this into Arabic. Um, but it, you know, the good news is they're getting better every day, but this really opens up a lot. I've seen students hold their cell phone with the, their home language version on that while looking at a Chromebook that has the English version. So it's reinforcing the academic language. Several questions came in about learning management systems because you showed them that you can press the assign button and you can assign through a CK12 class or through Google. And then you mentioned our integration with Canvas and Schoology. Um, can you review the timeline? Because several people are saying, when is that going to be available? Um, you know, what's going on with that? 
Sure, we're, we're really excited. We've been working with Google Classroom all year and we've gotten so many requests for Canvas and Schoology users that by the end of this summer, you will have a full integration into the 2.0 platform. We do have a separate Canvas session and Schoology session that we encourage you to attend. And Felix, who's in charge of that integration, will be walking you through and giving you a demo of what that's gonna look like. So we're pretty excited that this is happening here. And Carl's mainly focusing on our Flexbook today, but this afternoon and several more times this summer, we're talking about getting started with um, adaptive practice and assignments. So I'm actually leading a session on that and going to show you all about the different options for how to um, assign a Flexbook lesson, assign adaptive practice um, to your students through all those various options. So sit tight on that. Um, we had a couple questions about teacher guide. You mentioned that there's a teacher guide and several people were wondering about what students can see and what teachers can see. So maybe talk through what that, that looks like in our books. Sure. So you know, when the students are logged in as students, they do not have access to the teacher guide. Um, and that the teacher editions will only be available to self kind of identified teachers. Um, and these guides don't have a lot of secret sauce in them. It's just mostly it's, it's great pacing guides and other suggestions on how to use CK12 content well. Um, just remember, we have a lot of students who use us independently without the guide of a teacher. And so as much as possible, we try to provide the best ways to learn to everybody, whether that's a student or a teacher. And, you know, there's very, you know, the content that's available in the teacher's edition is, is really about, you know, good teaching practices. Um, just a few more that we'll do here. Um, a couple questions about highlighting and annotating capability in our digital textbooks. Sure. Yeah. So with all of our flex books on our site, I'm going to go back here and let's go um, into a lesson again. But the good news is it's really straightforward and the students enjoy it. Like it's one of those things that it makes the document personalized. So in, in here, when you move around, you're going to see there's the highlighter and there's the annotation. And one of the things I encourage the students to do, for example, is to identify the kind of the main thesis for a, um, for an, a lesson like this. So for example, let's say I, thought this was the main thesis. I can go ahead and highlight it like this. And then I can go also highlight supporting things down below that would also be important. And maybe I'm gonna do that in a different color, okay? And I can click on it and I can change the color to a, like a support color. Another thing I like to have my students do in the first paragraph is to annotate. Once they're done with the lesson, that they add in their own words what this lesson's about. So this lesson is, uh, talks about writing equations, et cetera. So they can do a little like two or three sentence summary in their own voice, save it, and it is part of this lesson now. And you can see it's coming up over here. And then as a reminder, all of your notes and highlights can be viewed off in the side toolbar now. So everything, it's a great way to study for a quiz to encourage the students to go back and look at the notes and highlights that they have done for a lesson. Okay, um, several questions are asking about the content that we offer in these Flexbooks, which I think is a great place to transition to our next section on um, choosing a Flexbook. So let me um, get back to our keynote presentation here. And again, you guys are doing a great job with the Q&A. Those are questions that you have for our team and Carl. Um, there's also some good conversations happening in the chat window, which we love to see that. Just make sure it's going to all panelists and attendees. And we are back to it here, Carl. All right, choosing a Flexbook 2.0. To get started, the most important step is picking the right Flexbook 2.0. We've worked hard to make this an easier process for you than in the past. Once again, we've brought everything to one place instead of making you search all over for it. We offer three different ways to get started with the 2.0 platform. The best way is to start with an existing CK12 Flexbook. These books and lessons have been written specifically for the 2.0 platform and take advantage of the latest learning technologies. The best way to see our core 2.0 offerings is to go to ck12.org flexbooks. 
Here you will find our latest middle school and high school books for math and science. Also, users have created Flexbook 2.0. While most of these books are variations of the CK12 Flexbooks 2.0, some are created uh, in content areas beyond math and science. In a moment, we'll use the CK12 search bar with the Flexbook 2.0 filter to find these books. Finally, you can create a blank Flexbook 2.0 and add in your own content or get content from other 1.0 or 2.0 lessons. All right, so let's go ahead now, and I'm gonna take over the screen again, and let's go back to the CK12 site. So let's say we were here. Well, actually, let's start at the beginning, just to keep reminding you. I'm gonna to navigate to the Flexbook 2.0 using the Explore. I could have typed this directly too. Go down here, and let's say this is the book here that I wanna use. So I could find that book or any other middle school or high school math or science book. And these are the, the books that have been optimized for our site because we've written them. And it's the same quality um, content creation that you'll find that we've done in the past. We have subject matter experts and domain experts. Books are peer reviewed and it's a rigorous process. You can always go find out more about our books and our authors under the Meet the Team and click on authors there. And you'll find out these are people with PhDs and these are you know, lifetime curriculum developers that are bringing you this great content. But we still hope that at some point you'll add to what they've done and really make it special for your students. So those are the CK12 books and the bottom line is that we've got a lot of them here that can, to get you started. And we're constantly adding more and more books into the 2.0 platform. And soon everything will be here. And we're really excited about that. The another thing that you can do is let's go back to the CK12 homepage by clicking the um, icon there. And let's go type in, for example, uh, world history. History. So this is a subject that CK12 doesn't have a lot for. So let's go here and it tells me I've got world history there. But I only want to see Flexbook 2.0 right there. So I'm going to filter everything and I want it to only show, and these filters can be really useful when looking for stuff in the Flexbook 2.0 platform. So now it's showing me these here, but I'm gonna go under Community Contributed tab here. And that's where I'm gonna find a World History Studies book from EPISD, which is El Paso. Big shout out to El Paso. They've done a lot of great things, and we'll be, you'll hear them mention throughout this training that they've done a lot of great things using CK12. And Juan Cabrera, the superintendent there, pretty much has said, we're never buying a book again. We need to have books be more fluid and more customized for our students in El Paso. So they've really committed to using CK12 to bring their students the best content. So we've got here um, a seventh grade book, here's Earth History, here's a draft that somebody else is working on, here's the newest EPISD US History book, and um, let's actually go into that. And it's here that you can see, all right, this is exactly the content I need, maybe I should use this book. And in the next section, we'll learn how to customize it. Finally, of course, you can make a blank book. And I encourage you to go here to my library. And then once you're in a library, you can create a new Flexbook 2.0. And, and we could start off and just, it could be on any subject. For example, I teach a video production class that I need a book for because there's no book. Video production 2019, 2020. And there it is, and I'm gonna save it. And I can add content into that book as I do it. But there's my new video production book that is gonna be this container, this vessel, for all the great content that I use in my class. So here you've seen that you can use CK12 books, you can use the search and the filters to find user-generated books, or you can just make your own by starting with a blank one. So Carl, some of our users have been asking when they should use the original Flexbooks instead of the new 2.0 platform. Well, Lindsay, the answer is simple, never. 
at this point, all the content you're using should be on the Flexbook 2.0 platform. You don't lose anything once you've transferred to our new platform. Instead, you gain so much to improve your teaching and to help your students learn. If you have any content from an original Flexbook 2, uh, that you, or sorry, original Flexbook that you'd like to use, add it to a new Flexbook 2.0 and you'll be able to take advantage of all our new insightful and intelligent features. So, to summarize, you get an intelligent learning platform offering teacher insights, interactive lessons, simplified interface, integrated adaptive practice, and curated modalities all in our Flexbook 2.0. And coming soon, you even get a PDF download option. Okay, we're gonna pause for just a second for a um, couple of questions. After you demoed the highlighting and annotating, we got a lot of questions about who can see those. So we just wanna clarify that highlighting and annotating is attached to the student's account and the student's login. Um, right now, teachers are not able to see those highlights and annotations because they're attached to the student account. But I've been in classrooms where teachers will have their students take a screenshot of it or the student or the teacher will do a, a walk around pass through, you know, with a clipboard to check that students are doing it. So um, that may be an enhancement coming in the future. But right now, that is specific to the student account and the teachers are not able to view that. Um, we also had some questions. Again, you just went through a lot of our Flexbook offerings, but could you review again kind of what our what our offerings are, um, had a few questions about NGSS and CCSS, um, and also elementary content. Sure, let's go back here. I think I'm gonna steal the screen back just to be able to show a couple things here. Um, so the first thing that you wanted to see, well, let's start with the NGSS and, and Common Core. We've got some really good um, links here to the standards for Common Core and to the standards of NGSS, where then it's broken down. And if you pick, for example, high school physical sciences, you see the standard and then the supporting CK-12 concepts here. And this helps you get to the great content that's available. Um, the other thing that I really, you know, I think is really good is these books that we've written in the 2.0 format for Common Core have been written from the ground up. It's not like we just took our old stuff and put a new stamp on it. And I think if you're looking for lessons and approach the way that the authors of Common Core, that Phil Darrow and Bill McCollum were really thinking about as they wrote the Common Core, I think you'll be really pleasantly surprised about how, how rich and deep thinking these books are. And what was the other thing, Lindsay, that you wanted me to do? Um, just some questions about are we expanding to other grade levels, other subjects? Yeah, so the good news is, is that once we have our co core content in math and science here, you know, it's our users who are doing the most amazing work because they are able to bring in curriculum and content that we just don't have access to here. So we, what you're going to see in the next year is a real boom of community contributed content where educators and curriculum developers like yourselves are going to be sharing their books in all topics, not just on in CK-12. And you'll see right now, if we go over to this here, um, we've, we've got a variety of content that is available from CK-12, but if you go over here, you can find stuff by grade level, by subject, by science, and now we've started this whole new area of user contributed, and we hope to be highlighting more and more people. For example, if you do a digital photography class at your school, make sure that the um, teacher has access to these. These are some great books that have been developed by users like you, and we hope to be highlighting more of those in the future. All right, let's transition to the topic of customizing our books, because that's definitely a benefit of our Flexbooks, is that you are able to um, make changes. Some of you are asking in um, Q&A of, can I add videos? Can I change the standards? So Carl is going to uh, discuss all that with you right now. And the good news, Lindsay, is the answer to all those questions is you can do whatever you want. We um, our users integrate CK-12's platform into their teaching and learning in a variety of ways, and I'm going to show you some of those right now. You can use CK-12 as your core curriculum or as supplemental. 
Some schools use a Flexbook 2.0 and then assign individual lessons and associated practice or a specifically set, a created set of questions that we call a quiz. It's their core curriculum. And the CK12 platform works well to deliver great content and offer personalized learning for all their students. Finally, you can choose to customize a Flexbook 2.0 to create the best possible content for your students. Other schools offer a core curriculum other than CK12, but still supplement that curriculum with a CK12 companion Flexbook 2.0. Of course, any of the CK12 modalities can still also be assigned. While CK12 Flexbook 2.0s can be used as is with no changes, the best possible content happens when you customize a Flexbook 2.0 to exactly meet the needs of your students. You'll be amazed that this is easier than you think, and the results are great. One of the reasons to customize is that you can end up with a book that exactly meets your scope and sequence. Students and teachers can easily see where the class is progressing through the book. No more jumping around to get to the next lesson. Another benefit of customizing is you can improve lessons with your own content. Add in your own activities right into that lesson. Let's say you flipped your classroom and made short videos that um, students watch usually as homework. You can include these right into your lesson. It's super easy to add them. Imagine a flexbook that could also collect content from other teachers in, at your school or in your district and that everybody's adding to this wonderful curriculum that is now larger than just the walls of your classroom. Okay, so Offering localized content has long engaged students and it's easy to include with Flexbooks 2.0. Publishers are not writing content for your city. And I often talk about you know, how in Tennessee they have some standards in social studies about the Grand Ole Opry. And obviously that might be unique to Tennessee. Shout out to Tennessee there. So you know, the, in, in Tullahoma School District, they went ahead and they created content on CK-12 addressing all of their local standards. And I know I've heard Coeur d'Alene, Idaho talk about that too, where they've added stuff so that it's about the things that the students know in that area. Finally, one of the best ways to customize your Flexbook is to include student work that becomes part of the curriculum. Instructional videos made by students can be a powerful learning tool. We'll talk more about ideas like this in the teaching strategies session that I'll be hosting uh, over the next few days. Next is a demonstration of customizing a Flexbook 2.0. I'll show you how to rename books reorder the scope and sequence, and edit a lesson and add in additional content. So I'm gonna steal the screen again from Lindsay. And let's go do that. So I'm gonna go use here our Physics 2.0 book. So once again, I'm on the CK12 homepage, and I'm gonna go into the 2.0 platform. All right, and then once I'm here, I can find physics, interactive physics for high school, there she is. And this is my book. So I realized this is the book that I wanna begin to use for my own course this next year. So take a look how I do this here. I go in and I choose customize under the choose menu. This allows me to make the book my own, to take that book, make a copy of it, and then begin any kind of customization. So let's call this the Carl's High School Physics, I'm gonna flex book 2.0. There you go. So I gave it that great new name and I'm clicking save at this point. So just like that, I've taken the CK12 book and I've made a book that I can use in my classroom and that I can share and all I have to do is actually grab this little um, URL here and share it with my students and my parents, etc. The one thing you'll notice here, maybe you can see I didn't get the revision number. I intentionally left that off because if you don't put the revision number, it'll always grab the largest, uh, the most recent version. And we'll talk more about that later. So here's my book and let's say I want to begin customizing. So I'm going to come back down here and it's going to say edit now and I'm gonna go edit the book. And one of the most amazing things that you're gonna see is that you can actually change the sequence of this 
very, very quickly. And you can take out the things that you do not cover. Like for example, in the state of Carl, we do not study magnetism. So I'm gonna take, take out that chapter, I'm gonna remove it. And then optics, we study a lot earlier than down there. So I'm gonna move it right after the beginning motion there. So I can move all of these chapters around and have them match my own scope and sequence of my course that I've created. And I can just click save when I'm done. Of course, this doesn't just mean you can customize the chapters, you can customize the order of the lessons too. So let's take this lesson on refraction and move it a little bit later because I do an activity later on that. You see it beautifully renumbers that, et cetera. Now, it, the customization doesn't stop there. Coming in here, we're gonna open up the editing environment for customizing a lesson. The first thing it's gonna offer me is do you wanna change the title? But you're gonna find here an editing environment like Google Docs or Word that's gonna allow you to add in exactly what you would wanna engage your students with. Here at Carl's High School, we like, um, I don't remember what this, uh, we like to show lots of different ways, et cetera. So I can put in a picture of my school there, I can have some students go out and do a lab and then add their content in here. You'll learn later on advanced Flexbook editing how to insert videos and interactives and other things from other websites, insert images, do all the things that you need to do to make this a really kind of powerful lesson for your students. And when you're done, you finalize it. And we're gonna see an example of what that lesson looks like now. And there it is. So here at Carl's High School, blah, blah, blah. So um, the other thing you can do is let's go back to the table of contents. Let's go edit it, okay? Or and actually, let's, we can do this a couple of different ways. We can add in content from other books. So let's say there's a really good lesson in the physical science book and that I wanna go grab, and I'm gonna build on that when I'm going. So let's see, physical science, there she is. And matter and change. And there's this one thing on mixture here that I really like. So let's go into this lesson. And I can add this lesson then, or any other content on our site from where it is right now, into my Flexbook. So you can add content in a variety of different ways, but I'm gonna go ahead and add that to my book and it tells me that it's there. This is perfect because Carl, a lot of the questions that we're getting in are um, people who teach a blended class, for example, earth, life, physical science, you know, can they combine our books? Um, and then also the process is similar for people who are wanting to take an older book that they may have been using it and put it in the Flexbook 2.0 um, platform. So um, that's exciting. Uh, hopefully you're going to show people where this is going to end up once they start editing a book because that's a question that's come up a few times as well. Sounds good. Okay, so let's go back now to my book. And one way to find my book, I'm now in this new book, the Physical Science Middle School book, but I can always come over here and go to my library. And that's gonna have all my books and including the brand new book that I just made in front of you here. Here's my book. And what you'll find out is that anything added in appears at the bottom. And then when I edit it, I can move it around and put it wherever I need it, okay? So I would just come up here and, and do click edit again. But we have a lot of middle school science people who take a lot of different books and put them all into one book as part of integrated science. Now with, um, you know, with mathematics in high school, a lot of people are pursuing integrated, um, integrated math for high school. So math one, two, and three, and it's really easy to take the CK12 quality content and put it in a different order using the way that we've just seen. And I, you know, I've been in so many classes and districts where they will go ahead and customize a book for their district in a couple hours that it does not take long and they're really amazed that wow this was so easy so i encourage you don't just use the ck12 books go ahead and make sure that you have the opportunity to customize a book and people enjoy using a book that has their school district's name on it with pictures from their district and activities and samples from students that are from that district it's really powerful and it's a great way to start with the content 
Okay, so referencing our Q&A here, um, I think you covered how you find a book to start editing. Did you show them their library of where the book ends up? Yeah. Okay, um, questions about if you delete something from your Flexbook, can you always put something back in? And yes, these books can be edited by you at any time. So even if you, you know, you're confident in your book going into the school year on day one, if you need to hour four, make some changes to your book, you can do that at any time. Um, and if you've pulled content from other CK12 books and sections, yes, those are always there for you that you can be, that you can add back in at any time. Um, there's a few questions about, can you, can you take lessons from one chapter and move it into another chapter? And of course you can rearrange the content and you also have the option to add in your own chapter headings and section headings. So, um, Carl's showing you here on his screen, um, how you can expand the options in each chapter and you can see the sections and you can drag and drop those to other sections, or you can even go up to the add content and you can add in um, additional um, chapters or a uh, new read. That's what we're calling, you know, a new lesson that basically brings up that blank um, document for you to start typing. So um, hopefully you're seeing that the potential here is kind of endless as far as what you can do with customization. Um, I'm trying to look for trends in the Q&A here. Um, a few people have asked about read aloud capabilities where right now ck12 we do not have any button on our site that's going to read our books aloud to you but i have been in schools where they're using um, some chrome add-ons i believe um, some other third-party software i think there's a lot of people who are doing that really well so you might look um, for external read aloud capability that you're using across all kinds of websites and those should be able to work for ck12 um, Oh, Carl's got one. All right, there's a question here asking how often is content updated with the textbooks and how often is information verified? And I think, you know, the nice thing about being a digital product is that we can do this all the time. When we got that beautiful first look at a black hole, one of the first pictures ever created of a black hole, we were able to put that into our content immediately. And, you know, one of the, you know, when we got the names of the four new elements in the periodic table, you know, we are able to instantly implement this and science changes so quickly. And I think, you know, we love that we can make these types of changes so that you have access to the most recent content. And we encourage you to also do that and then share it back with the community. And which is a good segue to our next section, which is publishing and sharing a Flexbook 2.0. So, after you've gotten a Flexbook 2.0 together, it's time to help achieve CK12's mission and share it with the world. The first step is to select Publish from the Table of Contents page. So nearby where we selected Edit and Customize, customize you can see we've highlighted here, is the word Publish. And the real benefit of publishing on CK12 is it allows anyone to search on CK12 to find your book. You can also share your book by sending the URL to other people. When copying the URL, as I mentioned earlier, remove the version number if it's there at the end to ensure that others are always seeing your most recent version. You might also consider creating a shorter URL using a free service like Tiny URL. You can also create a QR code, and we've seen this a lot in, our, in rooms, classrooms when we've gone around. It's really nice for the students to take their camera phone and just take like the, turn on the camera and it brings up the, the book that they've created for their classroom. So whatever it is and however you share it, there's really great reasons to publish. Um, we also suggest that you share the URL of your Flexbook 2.0 with other teachers at your school, maybe with your district TOSAs and coaches, and finally offer your book to your professional networks and on social media. Make sure to always tag CK12 Foundation hashtag OER and hashtag go open as really great resources of finding other people that are changing the way students are learning using great products like CK12. Finally, add your Flexbook to your school page. We have these great school pages and if you don't have one, email support and they can get it set up for you, but it's a really great way to share with other people the great content that you've created here on CK12. Most pages also have a green shareo plane 
to share a single resource with a Google Classroom, Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. Note that simply shares that resource. It doesn't assign it to your students, which you'd want to do through the assigned workflow in Google Classroom or on our site. So we'll be showing how to do that in other seminars. But the share a plane is just a really quick way to let other people know about what's going on with the content that you've found. So today, we've given you an overview of CK12's cutting edge product, the Flexbook 2.0 platform. We have now moved Flexbooks from linear digital textbooks to an intelligent learning platform. At the heart of the 2.0 platform is our artificial intelligence and machine learning, which authorize, offers, offers a personalized journey for each student. Everything needed is all in the lesson. No more searching around the CK12 website. All the content has been specifically curated for that course. And the Flexbook 2.0 platform can be accessed from any device using a browser simply by going to ck12.org. However you access CK12, know that you, we are your technology partners and working together, we can offer the best way to enable each student's personalized journey. All right, I'm gonna ask you a few quick questions. And then as we are approaching um, the hour mark quickly, um, all of our core webinar sessions, we usually try to go about an hour and then we stay on after the hour mark and answer all of the remaining questions. So we'll stay on another 15, 30, 45 minutes, however long it takes to answer any questions that, that, that might be happening. But Carl, let's tackle a few. Um, Lots of questions about copyright, about what users can put in the book from external um, sources. One example that came up was um, about articles of can they link out to external articles? Yeah, it's funny because, you know, as educators, we're not lawyers. And when we enter this world, you have to learn a little bit. And I think most of it's pretty straightforward. But an example is you can put a link to anything in your content, okay? So if you're linking to it, that means that the students will then go to another place on the internet and that's fine you're allowed to link to anything you're even allowed to link to pay sites that maybe your your district has a subscription with discovery education or you know any site like that or ixl so you know the bottom line is that you can link out now other than that we use a creative commons license here that we'll be talking about in future webinars this week okay and you're going to find out more about this but using our creative commons license we use the creative commons by nc which means give us credit and don't sell it and you can use our content but this means also that you have to use other you have to be respectful to other copyrights for example our friends at mcgraw hill don't want you copying that big chunk of text that they wrote and putting it into your book on ck12 because that's a copyright violation. So if it's something you've made or you, you, you know, teacher down the street, or if it's from another site that's using a Creative Commons license that works with us, then you're fine. So, you know, like I said, we'll talk more about this later, but it is something you need to keep in mind because you're kind of becoming a publisher yourself now by creating your own content. And we do want to make sure that we follow the laws. And this is the point where everybody has been typing in, wow, this is amazing. How is this actually free? Um, we addressed this in the on-demand videos a bit, but we are, as a reminder, we are a nonprofit and everything we offer is completely free. And somebody said, yeah, it's free for three years. Then they start charging like some other, you know, some other subscription is like that. Um, we are free. We've been around since 2007. So that's 12 years. That's, that's, that's forever in ed tech years. Um, we will continue to offer our content for free. Um, so use and get excited about that. Uh, maybe one more question before I do a few wrap up things and then we make our way through all the other Q and A's. Um, some questions about collaborative editing. Um, which I know we're going to talk about more in advance, but for teachers who are already getting excited about working with coworkers, what do they need to know about that on our system? Yeah, at this point, we have, we really kind of, we have a suggestion of how to do that, how to work with a team, and we can go over that later. Essentially, you create a separate account, and the book is developed and created in that account that's not attached to any one person's account, and that's true, and we'll talk about that later, but it's true for any book that you're creating. You probably don't want to have the book 
for Carl High School live in Carl's account because Carl might die, okay? And then it's a little more complicated. So it's good to actually create, for example, a Carl Science account, which then has all the books that are created for Carl's High School. So, you know, I think the bottom line is, is that, you know, we do, we do offer more and more for collaboration, but at this point, you know, we, we try to keep it simple and clear. So you'll kind of have one person in charge and then the idea is, is that person will kind of help everybody else get along. And before we go finish this up, I do want to tell everybody right now, if you've enjoyed what you've seen today, and you've, I'm sure each of you could think of another person that would benefit by taking our certified educator program, we really ask you, as Niru, our founder, says, pay it forward, like you know she did in the opening video. Please invite other people to join us. It does not cost any money, and it really, we're just hoping to change education by creating a really powerful, intelligent platform. So I encourage each and every one of you to go forward our certified page to a friend today and say, wow, I just sat through a webinar and I think there's some really powerful, great stuff that you could use here. And I'd appreciate that personally. So I, I thank you for that. Okay, I'm going to do some kind of end review information here. And um, this will all go a lot quicker when it's not day one, session one, because pretty soon here, you guys are going to be confident in navigating our course and you're going to know how the, the program's going to go. So don't worry, we, we will speed this along in future webinars with the, with the startup and the end. But I do want to make sure that we're all on the same page here about what happens after a live session. Um, this is just a reminder that you can uh, download this. Uh, it's, it's two pages. Um, you can keep it on your desktop, you can print it out, just a, a tiny URL, quick reference sheet about the 2.0 platform and what Carl showed today. So you all have completed the live requirement for this first session. Um, Zoom will automatically record your attendance. So we know who you are, um, we know your email address you, you signed on with, and we can see the duration of your session attendance. Um, we hope that you are here for the majority of the session. If one time this summer you have to leave a session early, that is not a dramatic, that's not a dramatic issue. If you quit every session 15 minutes into it, we will not be able to give you credit for attending sessions. So sign on, be with us for the hour, and Zoom will record your attendance. There's nothing else you need to do. We will cross-check your live attendance with your assignment completion. So sometime before the end of July, I would suggest soon while it's fresh on your mind, you need to locate the session assignment for this session. Um, you will see that we have all of the assignments already built into the course. Um, you only need to do the assignments that match the sessions you are doing for, um, to, to meet your requirements for the certified educator program. So even though you might see nine assignments, um, only five of those for the live sessions are going to be required and they should match your zoom attendance um, again you can find this assignment in the course flexbook and when you scroll down we have typed a list of all of the questions that you're going to be asked in that quiz um, one kind of limitation of our system at the moment is that once you start the quiz you will have to complete it all the way through so we have printed all the questions you're going to be asked on that Flexbook page. So make sure, like, if you need to copy those and put them in a Word document and type some answers or, you know, make some notes on it before you do the quiz, just be confident in your answers before you press the start button on the quiz. I think that'll, that'll help you along. And again, we're not, this isn't, this isn't a cutthroat assessment. We're hoping that it's useful for you, um, that you're bookmarking some resources, that you're being reminded of some great things Carl said once you have time to get on the site and explore. A few additional things you're gonna find um, in your course flexbook. Uh, we have links to our YouTube page. We're going to put the recording of every single webinar session onto a playlist for the summer. So, and at each section you'll see the watch now button that takes you to our YouTube playlist. Um, we try to get it up quickly, but it could take up to 24 hours, depending on how things are going. Um, but within a day for sure, you'll be able to see the recording of the session that you participated in or any other session that we do during the summer. 
We also have a link that says give feedback. Um, we encourage you to answer the short survey to give us feedback on the content and presentation of our sessions. We are always looking to improve and we are happy to receive any feedback that we get. It's just a few questions. So if you have time, um, you can view the give feedback um, button in the Flexbook or this is the direct link. It's another tinyurl.com, CK12 Feedback 2019. The same form for all sessions. So anytime you attend a session and want to give us feedback, we read every comment and we are so thankful for them. Um, so for that, again, we're, we're at the hour mark. So those of you who have your questions answered and you need to leave, you are welcome to sign out of Zoom and um, move on with your day. Hopefully, you know, get excited for this afternoon session. Um, if you have open questions or want to stick around for demos or just stay on and see what other people are, are asking, we are going to stay on right now. We're going to continue to work our way through Q&A and rapid fire answer as many questions as we can. Um, one more just thing, as you have questions throughout this program, jumpstart at ck12.org. Um, send it to us. We have a bunch of people trying to respond to these questions. It may take 12, 24 hours to get back to you, but we have an auto reply that should give you a lot of quick answers to maybe what you're needing. Um, also, day one, session one, post it on your social media. Let everybody know that you're learning this summer. We are on um, the socials as at CK12 Foundation, and we are using the hashtag CK12 certified this summer. So, all right, Carl's going to go back over to live demo mode. And again, goodbye to those of you who need to leave. Um, everybody else, stay on and see what else you can learn. Yeah, and I'll just do a plug for this afternoon session is getting started with adaptive practice. And I really encourage everyone to take this session because it's where personalized learning comes alive with CK12. And Lindsay's going to walk you through that one and just really kind of show you how we use artificial intelligence and machine learning to make a huge difference in the um, learning process for students. And it's where Flexbook 2.0 really begins to shine. So please join us today 3 p.m. Pacific time and we'll be kind of showing you what makes CK12's adaptive practice our big secret sauce here. All right, let's um, begin to answer some of the questions here and do the questions that I just saw one and of course when I start reading it moves around. Um, do the lessons include higher level questions and where's the student discourse involved in the lesson? Yeah, so that's as kind of We'll learn more about that at 3 p.m. today um, because the idea is with our adaptive practice, very quickly in the first three questions, we determine what level the student's at, and then we start building new knowledge from that starting point, from whatever level the student is. And you'll see how that works this afternoon. But it really is the power of CK12, where in math and science, we have 150,000 questions. And we use these questions in an intelligent way to help personalize the learning pathway for each one of your students. All right, so let's go. Um, Um, why don't why don't we start back up at the top? So it sounds like this is for independent practice or as a flipped classroom type of supplements. Is this true? I'm thinking this sounds like something that could be used for math stations. Um, you talked about core versus supplemental earlier. Um, it can be used for absolutely either. Um, you can flip classrooms. We see teachers record videos and add them to their flexbook. Um, I've also seen it with stations where one station is doing a plix, one's doing a sim, one's reading a read from our book. Um, so lots of different applications. And Carl's going to give you more ideas for this as um, in his teaching strategies session. Um, and I'd also add to that, Lindsay, that um, a lot of schools do use our Flexbook 2.0 as their core curriculum. It is every, all the content needed. So maybe your class is going to look different because it's not just a teacher standing in front of the classroom and occasionally doing a little activity. You might choose because there's so much interactivity in our, in our middle school and high school books. It, it really gives a great opportunity to kind of have a more blended classroom approach where the CK12 book is your curriculum and you're just taking advantage of all the different ways of learning, including our adaptive practice, which makes it a really good way to help each of your students and not just kind of a general pathway that we push our students through. So please do consider CK12 
as a core curriculum if that's how you want to run your classroom. Okay, the question on differentiation, hopefully we've given you some ideas on that throughout the session. Um, some people also create kind of their main Flexbook experience, but then you can basically make a copy of that book and further customize to differentiate for other students. Maybe they have fewer chapters, maybe um, you're stripping out some of the higher level questions at the end of different um, chapters. I'm also gonna talk about um, in creating classes, how you might set up a couple of different classes, like a red class and a blue class, and assign um, different work to different students. So um, that's a possibility with that. Um, I'm trying to look at Q&A here. Um, when you customize edits then publish, you can still come back and make changes. Uh, yes, absolutely. Edits are live automatically since it's already published. If you've already published your book, um, yes, they will see changes um, in real time once you save um, any of your changes. And we have a question here about calculus. They don't see a Flexbook 2.0 yet for calculus. Yeah, we specifically have not converted that one yet. We're in the process of that, but it's really easy for you to take the existing calculus book and load it into the Flexbook 2.0 the platform, it will take literally a matter of minutes to do that. And then along the way, you'll quickly pull out the topics you don't need, and you might add in different ones that we hadn't included originally. So really, if you, in, in a few hours, you can have a personalized, customized, the correct sequence book ready for your calculus class. All right, do you offer hands-on science labs? Um, some of our science books have recommendations for some labs that you can do in class, but um, we've really focused on our digital simulations, which you can use. Um, they have downloadable worksheets and tutorial videos, so I would recommend trying some of those in your science labs. If you're looking for really experiment type things, um, we might not be your, your most comprehensive resource for that. Um, uh, how do you choose curators for your books? Um, our content has gone through a publisher-like content or, or publisher-like publisher model, um, that sort of system. We have authors, PhDs, NASA scientists um, who have created the core content, and then we have an army of contractors who are all domain experts, um, also many of whom have fancy degrees and titles, um, constantly reviewing our content, vetting it, um, making sure it is up to date, and accurate. All right, we had a question from a vet here about kind of making our books, chapters, assignments invisible. And what you do is you leave them in draft mode and you don't finalize them. And then even if somebody has access to your book because you've given them the URL, they won't see those until you click finalize. And this gives you kind of the opportunity to continue working on stuff and not sharing it with other people until you know you decide to do so. So just make sure you, when you're um, in the advanced editing of Flexbook that we've got a um, it, we've got an opportunity for you to learn exactly how to do that there. Um. Um, people are asking about finding questions for today's session. Um, so maybe I'll, Carl, why don't you answer a few other questions? I'm going to steal the screen and I'll go to our program page here. Sure. There was a question about um, kind of the timeline for assignments and things. And, you know, you, Ted, you've taken the first, um, the first web, uh, session today. And if you go into the Flexbook, if you go into the Flexbook, you're going to see the assignment listed in the Flexbook right there. Yeah, so here is um, the program book that you guys accessed. Again, if you've joined our class under shared resources, that's where you find a link to the program book. Once you're in the program book, um, I love this because you're getting a real demonstration of how our Flexbook system works that Carl just walked you through. Um, if you haven't already done so, you need to watch the first on-demand introduction session. But today, you just attended a live webinar session so again, we have loaded up all of these live sessions. Some of you may be only attending five of these sessions, so just ignore the other ones. But for getting started with the Flexbooks and the 2.0 platform, I'm gonna select that. And um, here is the session description. As you scroll down, I mentioned earlier, um, we list all of the questions that you're gonna be asked in your quiz. Uh, I took it earlier, so I can only see my report. I, 
clearly I didn't spend much time on it, my 10 seconds on it, but you guys are going to see when you're in your account, um, the option to start your quiz here. Um, and the questions that are going to be in the quiz are these questions that we have printed right here in the book. So once you're confident in answering these questions, um, go over to the quiz, start your quiz, and it'll take you one question at a time. And like I said, the, the, just the only tricky thing with the quiz is that you, you can't stop five questions in and go grab a coffee for an hour and come back to the quiz. It will time you out. Um, so you, you can't pause. You really need to complete the quiz in one sitting. And we're using quiz and assignments synonymously of it's your assignment. These, again, these are tricky quiz questions, but our system calls that a quiz. So um, we had another question here, which was about the practice questions and that they're graded and what are the different levels for the students and the nice thing or the secret sauce as I keep referring to it about our adaptive practice is that we have many questions at different levels and the more that students use our platform, the smarter it becomes. And so what you'll find out is it's not just three levels, easy, medium, and hard that we have. We actually have an infinite number of levels. And each time a student takes, you know, answers questions on our system, it becomes smarter. And each one of our questions has been leveled and in comparison to the other questions. So as a student moves forward and starts learning more, we're constantly serving up what we think is the best, best next question. So we do all that work for you, the teacher, so that you can do all the other things that you're great at with students in your class. And we take away some of this to make it easier on you. There's another question here about downloadable worksheets. Um, we have them attached to some of our original Flexbooks. The problem with those is they're not a digital resource. Therefore, it's really hard to offer you any of the artificial intelligence or machine learning based on those tools. So we are translating those and including like worksheet type activities onto our platform now and you're going to see more and more places where questions are being asked as part of our practice as part of inline questions but the content there is digital and therefore we are able to use the students responses to help identify when they're struggling so you're going to see fewer and fewer worksheets available because they are a, a very static one size fits all and that's not the direction that we hope to go we hope to be able to have intelligent learning platform that can kind of adapt to each student's needs okay question do i assign a whole flexbook to the students or do i just assign a particular lesson in a flexbook to the students so the word assign is important carl talked to you earlier about sharing a book um, you can take the url you can use the 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 share plane there's different ways to share a book with the students then they can add that book to their library and they can access that book at any time. Um, so if, you're, if your class workflow is, hey, today we're gonna look at chapter three, this lesson, then you might just have the students access the book through that URL that you've shared or from their library. If you are wanting a grade pass back, if you're wanting to know how students did on the practice with the associated Flexbook 2 lesson, then you are doing an assignment. And that's kind of a topic for another webinar. Um, but in general, um, you, can, you can assign a lot of things in advance like we have for our program um, as an example for that. But um, usually you wouldn't assign a whole Flexbook because maybe you're making edits, maybe you've got a, a snow day or something, depending on where you are. Um, but I encourage you, Linda, to, um, to join us for the getting started with adaptive practice and assignments, and we'll, we'll talk about best practices for, for, the, for the flow of assignments. There's a question here that um, one of our members has asked uh, that they've had meetings pop up this week and wondering how they can switch their live sessions so that they can take different ones? Sure, yeah, um, you can always sign up for a session at our registration page, it is active. So again, at ck12.org slash certified under registration. We're gonna start taking off um, the option to register for sessions that have already been completed, but you can sign up for sessions at any time. And then the Zoom link that you had that was the confirmation for your registration session, uh, if you go to the bottom of that, there is a cancel option there. So um, you can go into the Zoom link and press cancel 
on a session that you don't plan on attending and you can register for a new session at any time. Um, if you forget to cancel a session and you know, you're running late, you weren't able to make it, it is not a big deal. You'll just show up as somebody who did not attend. Um, we don't dock you points. <laughs> we don't think bad thoughts. Um, you just won't be on our uh, live attendee list. So you can, you can not show up and then um, just make sure that you are getting five live sessions and register on this page if you need to. And I think one of, one of the things to keep in mind is we've designed this program because we think there's huge benefit from participating live. And that's why it's not just all pre-recorded. So we really appreciate you taking the time out during the next two weeks here when we are live with um, at least two sessions a day. We are going to have the additional sessions that give information, for example, on uh, Google Classroom or Canvas or things. And those don't have assignments. They're just to other information that, that you might need. So we really want you to make sure you carve out the time for five of the live assignments or the live sessions because they're wonderful opportunities to participate in the learning of CK12. Okay, Justin has a question. Hi, Justin. I think we met in St. Louis. Um, Justin, hi. Um, you're not clear. I don't understand what the assignments are for. Um, the assignments are a program requirement. The two on-demand sessions and the five live sessions have the accompanying assignment. And that's for you to digest what you learned in the session and apply that learning toward finding resources, exploring our site, and like I said, hopefully building practical things that are gonna help you next year. Um, we are using the term quiz just because the way we've built that assignment into our system, it is in our quiz flow. Um, so you're going to be starting a quiz and answering those questions in the quiz format. Maybe that helped answer your question. I, ho I hope if not, um, just let me know again. And we have another question here. Will the question and answer be available after the session is ended? No, it actually stops here in a few moments when we kind of finish out this session, but please do email our support desk at support at ck12.org and they can always get you the information and check out the articles available at, available at the help desk. A lot of your questions have already been asked and they are, those solutions are there for you. So we have a variety of ways to help you when we're not live. But once again, we'll be live again in just a few hours at 3 p.m. California time here and we'll be um, talking more about adaptive practice. Um, we have one final question here. Um, when trying to edit a lesson, how do I edit a chapter? The good news is you just create the lesson and I think Lindsay's on it right now and you're going to create the lesson and then once it's created, it'll add it to the bottom of the list of table of contents and you can drag it up wherever you need it. So I think Lindsay's customizing now. So here we have, let's add a new read, which is a new lesson and she'll give it a title and then it's going to save it at the bottom of that list and we'll go into there and there it is. And finalize it. And then you come over here and it's at the bottom of the list in the table of contents. Uh, there it is, you can see there. And then you could edit it and move it around anywhere you want it. So that's great. All right, so the question is, um, there's a question out there, will we be translating the CK12 platform into Spanish, the second most uh, used language in the world? So. Um, at this point, we um, are we haven't started that process yet. We also have a lot of users in Brazil um, speaking Portuguese, and we have not actually moved that direction yet. It's you know we are just a few people, thirty five people in Palo Alto, California, here making all this magic happen. So we appreciate your patience, and you know please email support if you guys have suggestions of things you'd like to see and when we have time and uh, bandwidth we we attack them all so thanks so much all right well lindsay i think we have cleared out the q a queue and like i said please do take a look at the help desk lots of great articles there all righty that's um, it for session one we'll see you guys later in the program thanks <laughs>